Hello, thanks for watching this video. Today I want to talk about the uh, Gradle 8.12 release and also the patch release we shipped in January. Uh, it's just a quick summary of what's new and then we will switch to the demos by team members. In 8.12 we actually shipped quite a lot of uh, new features, mostly about better error uh, propagation and reporting. Also we added uh, support for file system watching and continuous builds on Alpine Linux. We added uh, build and testing support for uh, Swift 6 uh, with native plugins and also the release includes quite a lot of bug fixes and patches. In January we also had to address a few regressions mostly related to platform compatibility on macOS, on Linux, and there were some other changes. So it required additional patch release, which is currently available. And you update, if you're updating from previous Gradle versions, make sure to update straight to dot one. As always, in this release, we had quite a lot of patches from many contributors. Thanks everyone. We had more than 80 issues fixed and there are quite a lot of changes. If you want to know more about the delivered features, check out the release notes. As always, there is a lot of information there, including upgrade guidelines, uh, a list of known issues if there are any, and there are also details uh, and documentation links for all introduced features. Also, we have a public roadmap where, as always, we plan updates on all the key initiatives uh, happening in Gradle Build Tool and the ecosystem. And if you want to know more, uh, subscribe to our newsletter. The next edition is coming up soon. Okay, now let's talk about the new features introduced in Edo 12. There are quite a lot of platform specific changes. And the first one is support for file system watching on Alpine Linux. It's basically a virtual file system implementation uh, so that Gradle doesn't have to do file system calls and instead of that can uh, check with in memory system. And then improves performance quite a lot for operations and for build time speeds, especially for the projects that involve a lot of files. This uh, feature also enables continuous builds on this platform. Continuous builds uh, watches for the changes and builds and tests uh, the project on the flight. It's quite handy, especially if you're operating in cloud native developer environments like inside containers where Alpine Linux is quite popular. So now you can have live rebuild just uh, in this configuration. Okay, and the next one is support for Swift 6. It's a new version that was introduced last year, and this version basically a new language version, which caused quite a lot of incompatible changes, quite a lot of tooling changes. So it was required to actually do some support on our side. And this is what we did in this release. So now you can build Swift, Swift applications or libraries by using the latest version. The next one is everything about troubleshooting and error propagation. So we got quite a lot of improvements in the problems API and the HTML summarization for that. And also there are additional uh, troubleshooting uh, capabilities. So I will let the team to do the presentation. And we start with problems API. Gradle has an incubating API to report problems during the build. The API is being used by several components in Gradle. Java compilation, dependency resolution, and more. In addition, we expect the API to be adopted by third-party plugins after maturation. In Gradle 8.12, we integrated the problems API with build failures. If a Gradle build fails because of a problem report, the build failure message is enhanced with the report details. And now, better HTML reports. In a previous release, we introduced a summary HTML page that is displayed at the end of the build. In Gradle 8.12, we made it more robust by removing the entries that reoccur many times during the build. The summary HTML document contains the information of exactly how many entries were skipped. Thanks, Donald. And now let's speak about artifact transforms uh, and better error detection there. Okay, so the floor is yours, Tom. Artifact transforms are an important Gradle concept that is heavily used in the Android ecosystem. They are used to satisfy dependency resolution requests when a component's existing variants are not compatible with the requested attributes. Transformations contain actions that do work to modify a variant's artifacts, and these actions produce new artifacts identified by a changed set of attributes. Multiple transforms can be run in sequence to produce a chain of transformations that will ultimately satisfy a request. These transformations are not prioritized in any way. So if two different equal length sequences of transformations that produce the same result exist, Gradle has no way of knowing which one it should use. This case should produce an ambiguity failure. 
as each transform likely does very different things, producing different outputs, Gradle can't just pick one. It doesn't have any way to determine which transformation chain is intended, since these are not prioritized in any way. Previously, in some cases, Gradle actually didn't fail when it should have. Sometimes, when multiple distinct, potentially correct transformation chains existed, Gradle did just arbitrarily pick one. This is a problem, because in addition to not knowing if the actions in the selected chain were the ones intended by the build author, if a new artifact transform was later added to the project, Gradle may or may not silently switch to using it as part of a different selected chain of transforms. This would produce different artifacts to satisfy the same dependency resolution request and potentially could cause very difficult to understand and difficult to debug situations. In addition to the wrong behavior, in cases when Gradle did detect ambiguity, the failure message it produced was not helpful. We've corrected and improved how Gradle identifies ambiguous transformation scenarios, and we've added many new tests to ensure we handle the edge cases correctly. We've also made the ambiguity failure message useful in this situation. The new message seen here is complete and displays all the information necessary to diagnose and debug the failure by actually identifying the transforms causing the ambiguity. It is a lot to read, and we have some ideas for how to better identify artifact transforms and compress this message in the future while still keeping it comprehensive. But for now, at least it will allow build authors to understand and debug these tricky scenarios. Thanks for the presentation, Tom, and thanks to the team. It's a really nice improvement in reporting, and let's go forward. So the next uh, topic for us is build authoring improvements, and there uh, we have two major things. The first one is that we have quite a lot of new APIs introduced to dependency con constraint declarations. So let's take a look. We've added some new methods to the dependency constraint handler interface that allow using providers as the source of dependency constraints. Previously, this was possible, but it was not obvious in the weakly typed methods in the old API. Here you can see examples of using the new API versus the old one. These new methods are visible in IDE auto completion and should encourage plugin authors to supply constraint versions and coordinates lazily using the provider API to declare properties on plugin extensions. This will help guide authors towards these best practices and avoid accidental eager evaluations when registering dependency constraints. Thanks for the summary, Tom. As always, you can find uh, a lot more information on uh, Javadoc. You can just open it, browse for the recent versions, and yeah, all the features and APIs are there. Speaking of APIs, uh, there is a, another update, service reference properties, which are now stable, and Rafael will present on what it means and also give a short demo. So let's go ahead. In this release, we are promoting service reference properties to stable. Service references we are introduced in Gradle Wait, and they are the easiest way of consuming shared build services. One of the benefits of using service references is that you no longer need to explicitly declare that your task uses some service that's done automatically for you. Also, service references implement in service injection, so you no longer need to assign the service reference to the property either. All right, so uh, let's update a plugin that is to use the internal annotation for declaring a task property for consuming a shared build service and use the new service reference annotation. First thing you need to do is to change the task implementation itself. We will replace the internal annotation with the new service reference annotation. This annotation comes from the org Gradle API services package. All right, this is it. Now you need to change the way you configure the task. So first thing you notice is that before you needed to keep a reference to the service when it was registered, because later you would use that reference to assign to the task property. That's no longer needed, so you can drop the assignment. don't no longer need to explicitly assign the reference to the task property because it's injected 
And also, you don't, you don't need to explicitly uh, declare that that task uses the, the service because that's also automatic. And that's it, we're done. Thank you for your presentation, Rafael. Indeed, it's quite a handy API, and I'm looking forward to see more service dependency injection uh, in Gradle. And for demos, that's it. As always, we have quite a lot of other features that are listed on the change log. You can find upgrade guidelines, descriptions, documentation references here. And just in case there are any issues and regressions, they will be here. So at the time of recording, we already have uh, two regressions. Uh, stay tuned for 8.13. Uh, if you want to find more information, uh, please make sure to subscribe to us on the YouTube channel. We publish these videos for every release. Also check out our public roadmap where we summarize the key initiatives on this GitHub board. So you can see that uh, there is quite a lot of things going on, including major themes like isolated projects, configuration cache, declarative Gradle, and many other things we are working on. Also, if you want to know about new things, subscribe to our newsletter. We have all the stuff there as always. And if you're interested to join the community to participate, or if you have any questions, uh, we have a community Slack where all the information and all uh, the developers uh, are around. So make sure to join. And that's it for today. So stay tuned for the next release. Bye.